Hello there, my fellow pilots of OP vehicles, and welcome back to another episode on the forces of the Tau Empire. Previously, you folks voted on another Tau aircraft. So today, I am bringing you another one, and also arguably the biggest of their kind among the Tau. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Manta. Yes, once again, another fish name. Do stay until the end and vote on another topic as well. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Manta, officially known as the Manta Missile Destroyer, is a super heavy Tau aircraft slash spacecraft which can serve as both a transport and a weapon platform. It was during the Taurus campaign that Mantas were used mainly to transport hunter cadres and their equipment across the planet and then into the desert to assault and slow the Imperial advance. In this way, the Mantas were used to position Tau troops for counterattacks against the Imperials and they stood ready to extract those same troops when the engagement was done. The fleet of Mantas of the Tau allowed for superior strategic mobility against the less air-mobile forces of the Imperial Guard. The Manta Missile Destroyer is one of the biggest aircraft which can be fielded in a planet's atmosphere in a frontline role, and it is the biggest dropship of its kind. Indeed, the Manta is so big that it is actually classified as a small spacecraft and lies on the borderline between classification as an attack craft and a full-fledged starship. A Manta is up to six times bigger than a Space Marine Thunderhawk, and has a limited Tau Ether drive capacity. However, due to its size, a Manta can only make very short warp jumps, restricting its use in interstellar transportation. For a longer trip, the Manta has to be transported inside far bigger Tau carriers, it is also capable of a hover mode for deployment of troops. They are armored with a very thick layer of the same crystal armor used in many other Tau vehicles and aircraft, the alloy called Fiotak. This gives it a measure of protection that is almost unparalleled among the Tau military. The bulk of the interior space of a Manta is utilized for transportation of Tau forces. Normally, it can transport a full hunter cadre of troops, as well as the cadre's equipment, supplies, and support assets. The hold of the Manta is divided in two spaces, an upper and a lower deck, where the upper deck is designed to transport troops, while the lower deck has the battlesuits and the vehicles. The upper deck has seats for up to 48 Tau Fire Warriors, and the racks to store all the weapons and equipment that they need. The Fire Warriors are also held in place by restraint harnesses to prevent harm to the occupants in the event of a rough landing, a crash landing, or usual turbulence. The upper deck also has six especially designed drone recesses along the center line, as well as a special seat towards the head of the Manta, which can carry the Tau Commander or an official like an Ethereal. The troops on the upper deck disembark from a ramp extending from the rear access bay doors to the ground when the Manta lands. The front of the upper deck contains an accessway and a ladder to the command bridge. From there, a Tau commander, or an ethereal, can oversee battle operations while also staying close to the site of the conflict. In this way, a Manta can serve as a mobile forward command post and also act as a fire control and communication hub. The lower deck of the Manta is much bigger, and it serves as a large elevator which can also be lowered. The lower deck can house up to four Tau vehicles, based on the chassis of the Devilfish, and up to eight battlesuits, whether they are XV-8 crisis suits or broadside battlesuits. The Devilfish transports within a Manta may also be fully loaded with Fire Warriors and Pathfinders and deployed directly. However, the lower deck can be configured to carry a variety of other Tau units, like Piranhas, Tetras, and even Crudes and their accompanying creatures. As a third alternative, Tau skimmers and units equipped with a jetpack can descend from the Manta at high altitude and drop directly into the thick of the fighting. 
Another important note to make is that a standard Manta cannot carry the Sky Rays, due to the height of the Sky Rays missile rack. However, variations of the hold may allow some Mantas to accommodate even the transportation of Sky Rays eventually. Since the Manta does count as a true spacecraft, it is crewed entirely by members of the aircast. Two members are in the main cockpit, one of them piloting the Manta while the other operates the weaponry. Another four crew also sit further back. The cockpit itself is also a very big escape pod, which can eject from the Manta in the event of an emergency. When this happens, the entire cockpit capsule disconnects and utilizes its limited anti-gravity mobility to return the pilots to the ground safely. In special circumstances, it can be surmised that the cockpit may also be used to save the lives of an important official like an ethereal. Mantas are mainly designed to support Tau hunter cadres in various military operations, whether in aiding their deployment or providing them with heavy fire support. Mantas can operate close to the ground as either a flyer or a skimmer, although when it is operating as a skimmer, they expend a lot of energy to stay aloft. Precisely because of this high energy cost, the Mantas are not capable of rapid maneuvering once they are committed to ground combat. In the initial stages of a planetary invasion campaign, Mantas will be used to transport Tau forces and supplies from starship at anchor in orbit to the surface of the planet. Once this stage of the campaign is done, the Mantas are essential support vehicles which transport Tau forces from one war zone to another. The few times that a Manta requires additional protection while it transports its troops, a squadron of Barracudas will often act as an escort and protect the Manta from enemy interceptors. The Mantas are not usually utilized in the thick of the fighting, as the loss of even one of them can be a devastating blow to a Tau force. When a Manta does participate in battle, the use of the firecast doctrine of Mont Ka, or the killing blow, requires the precise application of overwhelming power to destroy the enemy. It is in this tactical scheme that the Mantas are used to force a spear thrust into the heart of the enemy. They often drop directly from high altitude and straight down onto a target chosen for its strategic value, and the task of the Manta and the Tau force inside it is to destroy that target utterly. It is in these sudden and dramatic attacks that the Manta's heavy firepower is combined with the element of surprise to possibly change the course of a whole battle. The Mantas can also be used to counter enemy super heavy vehicles, like super heavy tanks and even titans, as they are one of the few assets capable of facing down and destroying a titan outright. The distinctive silhouette of the Manta is rightly feared by the enemies of the Tau Empire, as much as it bolsters the morale of the Tau forces when it appears. When it fights in space, a Manta fulfills the role of a heavy attack craft, where it can be a match for an entire squadron of Imperial Starfighters. The Mantas can also be configured to perform void-based bombing missions against enemy capital ships. However, they do have a limited interstellar capability and have to be transported by larger Tau spacecraft, like the Protector or Custodian class warships. The Mantas can also dock at the aircast orbital stations, which circle many Tau sept worlds. The armament of a Manta includes, and here you're either gonna laugh or you're gonna cry. Because of its large size, a Manta can carry a fearsome amount of firepower, which is comparable to even that of an Imperial Titan. This firepower allows it to devastate an entire army of enemies in a single engagement. The main weapon of the Manta are its twin heavy railguns. These utilize the same technology as the standard railguns, but on a far bigger scale, allowing for greater projectile speed and thus greater hitting power. The rounds of the heavy railgun are thin stabilized for extra lift and give a remarkable range within an atmosphere. They can fire massive ammunition shells, which contain drone processors which are programmed to direct the munition accurately towards the target. 
This is effective in Void Combat as well, where the shell can find weak points in the armor of enemy starships. The drone guidance is required, because standard ammunition rounds lack the necessary penetrating power to pierce most forms of starship armor. However, the rounds are even more useful in ground combat, as the shell can saturate a very large area with some munitions. The massive weapons, when fired together, can destroy an unshielded Warhound class Titan in one hit. As a backup to the main weapons, the Manta also mounts six long barreled ion cannons, grouped in batteries of three in each wing. These provide a shorter range saturation fire in the thick of battle. Other weapons of the Manta include a prow mounted launch port for the 10 seeker missiles. These can be controlled by the crew through the Manta's own networked marker light turret mounted under the cockpit or by other marker light operators on the ground. It also has 16 drone controlled long barreled burst cannon turrets. These are positioned all around the Manta's hull for close defense while the ship is landed and as anti-aircraft weapons when it is in flight. The turrets are positioned so that all angles of approach are covered by multiple burst cannons, meaning that no enemy aircraft can attack it without facing at least a couple of days. The burst cannons also make very good anti-infantry weapons, as the amount of firepower they can pour out is overwhelming. Mantas are equipped with additional integrated missile pods in the prow, as an extra protection against enemy aircraft if required. Although these are also effective against light vehicles, because of course they are. Outside of all this nonsense, a Manta is equipped with an advanced tau targeting array to improve the accuracy of the pilot aimed weaponry, and a black sun filter so that its weapons can be targeted effectively in a low light condition. For protection, outside of its thick armor, it is also equipped with an energy shield. The Tau energy shield, however, works differently than the Imperial Void Shields, in that they do not stop the incoming projectile, but deflect it instead. The shields are capable of deflecting even the mightiest of anti-Titan weaponry, as the shield's deflection response is proportional to the power of the energy used in the attack. While the Tau shields can be breached by well-aimed shots, they will rarely, if ever, collapse altogether like a Void Shield. And finally, some technical specifications on this thing include It weighs 382 tons when empty It has a length of 32 meters or 104 feet A width of 52 meters or 170 feet And a height of 8 meters or 26 feet For today's poll, I figured I would change things up a bit and do a battlesuit next so, which one would you like to see? Option A, a stealth suit. There's multiple ones here, so I'll pick one myself. Option B, the broadside battle suit. Or option C, the riptide battle suit. To vote, just write down your choice in the comments below. Thank you for participating. And all of this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the officially named Manta Missile Destroyer for today. Definitely a well-armed super heavy aircraft, if nothing else. In fact, I don't think anything I ever described so far from the Tau Empire has as much firepower as this thing. But don't worry, there's many Tau units left to cover. Now, is the Manta among your favorite Tau units? What do you like or dislike most about it? Do you know of any other aspects of it I didn't mention? Do share any thoughts or questions you might have in the comments below. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe button for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end and I wish you all a great and healthy day. For the greater good.